Hey guys, I'm here with a very special video. So these are snacks that I had throughout my childhood that kind of meant a lot to me or they're kind of ones that I really looked forward to eating. So some of these will have a bit of a, a background story so I'll be sure to tell you those. But yeah, hopefully some of you uh, found joy in eating these as a child as well. Now these are Asian snacks. I might do a separate one where it's like American slash Canadian snacks. But these are six Asian snacks that I ate throughout my childhood that I loved. Now I don't know where to start, so I'll start with one that everybody knows, which is Pocky. So if you're around my age, <laughs> growing up, you probably um, knew the chocolate and the strawberry ones the most. Um, there were other variations like almond or dark chocolate as well. But a few years ago, everyone mostly knew the chocolate and strawberry variations. So he would get the chocolate and I would get the strawberry. Now I like the strawberry one as well, but there were times where I wanted the chocolate. But I knew, <laughs> me being the smart one, I knew that if we both were to get chocolate, my parents would force us to get one and then we would have to share the one box. So what we would do is I would get strawberry and he would get chocolate. And if they ever argued for us to choose one, we would say, no, but I want strawberry or I want chocolate. And then when that way they would be forced to get two boxes. So one for him and one for me. And then um, we would switch a few sticks, but yeah, that was our devious little plan. So if you know me, you'll know that I like playing with my food. So the first few I'll probably eat normally like this. Bite it. So I'll kind of nibble the tip off. Just the chocolate. So I'll kind of nibble the top off. And then I'll kind of use my teeth to like grind off the um, chocolate. <laughs> it kind of just works with your bottom teeth. If you use your top teeth, then the whole thing breaks off. But. eventually it comes off and then you get like just the stick you break that off and then do the rest all right so the next one I don't have a story on but it is the white rabbit creamy candy now this is a candy that's kind of been talked about um, quite a bit it no it does not taste like rabbit but it uh, comes in this little wax paper so when you unwrap it with the wrapper there's kind of this weird white film that comes with it and a lot of people were discussing, you know, if you tear it off, if you're supposed to eat it with the candy. When I was younger, I would tear it off, but you can actually eat it with it. It's edible. It just dissolves with everything. So it's basically like a, a, a milk candy. It's like a variation of a milk candy. It's a very classic taste that a lot of Asian kids um, will recognize. I believe this is a Chinese candy, but um, I feel like even kids that are Chinese know what this is. Packaging has stayed the same, which I love. So, next we have the lychee jelly candy. Now, when I was younger, they had a different brand that came in like um, plastic buckets that you could keep, and the shape was a little bit different. Now, the ones that you'll find most commonly are these, well, the ones that I find anyways are these ones, but the one that I had before was like kind of just um, a U shape and then there was like a giant piece of uh, lychee jelly about this big inside, just one. But now you have this lychee jelly with like little tiny squares, which is alright, but I like the other one more. Where the tab says to open, to be honest, it's better if you use your teeth. And then right away the juices come out, so you'd have to suck on the juice. And then you can peel it back. And drink any leftover juice. Then you use the cup to push it out. So now it's kind of elevated. So all you do now is put your mouth over it and then just suck on it. So then the whole thing goes in your mouth. So it's like... Mm. And you eat it. It's still really good. Next we have the Indonesian shrimp chips. Now the reason, um, there's a reason I am choosing this particular pack and not the Nongshim shrimp crackers. That's not the one I grew up eating until later on. So early in my childhood, my mom would always buy these ones, which uh, is the Indonesian style shrimp chips. They taste and look a bit different than the 
non-shim shrimp crackers that everybody is eating now. I think because those ones are the cheapest. This pack is a little bigger and it does cost a bit more. I think it's like $3 a pack, whereas non-shim chips you can get them for like a dollar or something. But I think it's good to splurge once in a while. And this is what I need to eat because my mom knows these ones. And I do too. And this is a very iconic bag. So make sure it has this green bag with like giant Chinese letters at the top and like a picture of the shrimp and the chips. And it has to say Indonesian shrimp chips. It's funny because it's Indonesian style, but I think it's a Hong Kong brand. So the shrimp chips are pretty much ovally. They actually look like chips. Mm. I miss this taste so much. I actually haven't had these in a long time, so. If I were to explain it, when you go to a Chinese restaurant or even one of their bakeries, you'll see those like colorful uh, shrimp chips. That's the closest that these will come up to. But if you love those, you will definitely love these. Um, these are a little bit softer, but the taste is actually very similar to those like colorful shrimp chips. You don't know what I'm talking about. They come in white, green, and pink. Yes, those three colors. See over here, the third ingredient is actually shrimp. Not shrimp paste, not shrimp powder, it's actually shrimp. You know, this thing does not need MSG and it's still very addictive. Next are my favorite cookies of all time. I love cookies, but nothing compares to these baby cookies slash milk cookies. I don't know, I'm not quite sure where these originate from. Um, I've seen a lot of Chinese brands make them, but this one that I picked up is actually a Japanese brand. So I think in Japan, I guess they're known as baby cookies, but in, I think, China, Taiwan, and all those places, they're known as milk cookies. They come in little balls, um, and unlike other cookies, you don't bite them. You could bite them, but that's not the whole point. So you can bite them. You bite it a few times, and then just kind of dissolves and melts in your mouth. The best way to eat them is you put one, you let it sit on your tongue, and then kind of swirl some of the saliva around it, if that makes any sense. So, but you basically put it on your um, tongue and then push it to the top of your mouth. And then using the saliva under your tongue, just kind of swirl it around and then push down. And then while it's dissolved, it becomes like a flat pancake. And then you swallow that. Now the last one I'm going to talk about, there is a nice little story. And these are hawflakes. flakes. Now, a lot of people are like, what the hell is a hawflake?" flake? So hawflakes flakes are made from hawthorn berries, um, which is kind of like a dark pink berry. They're known to be very healthy for you and have a lot of benefits. Um, but these, yes, are known as very healthy things that not a lot of kids will eat, but there's a story behind it. These little flat pancake flakes. So they're multiple flakes. So it's like a little piece. They're all right. It's naturally sweet, um, with a tiny bit of a medicinal taste, but a lot of people like these. I did this as, this one last because I don't love these, but I actually did look forward to getting them. So when I was younger, um, when my mom was going through like this herbal medicine phase, and I think around the time she was trying to get pregnant with um, with my brother. So we would go to Chinatown Weekly to get our groceries and whatever, but there was also this um, Asian medicinal place. You guys know what I'm talking about, like the place with the, they sell all those dried herbs like ginseng and the dried mushrooms and the dried fig berries or whatever other things and they'd be in like glass jars on shelves behind me. Uh, we would go in and this time I was like a little girl and there was a lovely uh, husband and wife who owned the shop and I don't know if they had kids of their own or their kids were all grown up but basically they love kids <laughs> so every time they saw me they would um, try to make small talk with me but back then I was very shy so I would hide behind my mom and they would tempt me with a pack of these this was in Chinese they're like hi little girls eventually they knew my name in Chinese which I will not dis uh, disclose here <laughs> but they're like little oh, girl did you want one and then they would just give it to me. And then eventually, they, uh, after going so many times, they would just say, hi, and then just give it to me. <laughs> Instead of asking, they would just automatically give it to me. 
So every time I saw them, I would get one of these. And then while my mom was talking to them or getting her little ingredients uh, packaged up, I would just be sitting there and eating these. It made the trip less boring. <laughs> and then eventually I grew kind of fond of these. So I do kind of like them once in a while. But I have a friend who like loves these. I don't know why, like, like loves them. Probably watching this video right now. <laughs> you can have half this pack, you person. But yes, those are six childhood Asian snacks that I grew up eating, uh, mixed in with a little bit of story time. Look forward to an American uh, version of this because I grew up eating a lot of American snacks too. So yeah, let me know if you ate any of these growing up, um, if any of these are your favorites as well, if there are any, if there are some that you ate that I maybe forgot. Uh, let me know. Until next time. Bye!